Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. Hi, hello. My name is Loie and before I hop into this video, which I'm very excited to be sitting down and filming, I want to quickly explain the setup, the lighting, where I am and what's kind of going on. My mom got into a pretty severe car accident uh, this past Wednesday when I'm talking about this. I had fallen asleep at like 5.30 in the morning and I got the call at 7 and she's okay. Everything is okay. There are some pretty severe injuries that we're handling, but I've been with her every single day to make sure that she has the help that she needs, but she's my mom. And a lot of you know that I lost my dad in not a similar way at all, but uh, I got kind of a similar call when um, he first started feeling badly. He had had a mild heart attack and then it was suddenly a severe heart attack and he passed away within the hour and when I got that call it was so difficult to process and all I've wanted is to be here for my mother, to be at her side, able to help her. So that's why I'm in kind of a different background. This is kind of like my room, I guess you could say, at my mom and her boyfriend's house. This is where I always stay. So that's why there's like no good lighting or anything like that. That's why I'm here. I know that you guys don't care. I know that you just want videos. Um, and I know even most of you wouldn't even want a video right now. You'd say just be with your, be with your family. But the fact of the matter is that this is my little bit of downtime that I have between um, the end of the night, the last of the medications, my mom's gone to bed, and when I go to bed. So this is my free time and this is how I want to spend it, is talking to you guys, hanging out with you guys, because you make me so happy and because you are what gives me, like, peace in this world. So if you ever doubted that I really love YouTube and I really love making YouTube videos, I hope you can rest assured that that is not the case. I do, wait. It is the case that I really, 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 really love making videos and I love being with you guys. I think my energy was probably a little low in that intro, but please rest assured, I'm actually really excited for this. I've spent the last couple of days kind of researching these haunted dolls. I had filmed this type of video a few months ago and I went back to kind of check on the analytics because you guys probably already know this, but as a YouTuber, I really keep track of my videos, how they, you know, perform, what videos get more views than others, how you guys like respond in the comments and with the likes and stuff and I saw that my eBay haunted doll video where I went through a bunch of haunted dolls on eBay had done really well like over 300,000 views which is a little bit more than I typically gross on my channel per like video and I saw that the comments were just so fun you guys really were interacting on that video so I kind of compiled another list and some of these have actually sold in the time that I pulled them and some of them are still for sale but I thought I would kind of run through them with you and talk all about these super creepy haunted dolls on eBay now this one is weird and it actually oh my god it sold it sold for $26 and 50 cents um oh wait no it didn't it was relisted huh how strange i wonder if someone just didn't pay um i just saw that it was actually relisted um but anyways so this is a three-faced doll it is a doll with three faces the pictures are terrifying but the story was even weirder I have absolutely no idea where this doll came from or how it got here. I cannot say how old this doll is or where it originated from. My husband was cleaning out one of our spare rooms and he found this doll in a hideaway in, a, in the wall in an old box. It was a bit of a tongue twister. We have lived here 17 years and never knew this hideaway was there. It was always just a spare room and nothing much was ever done with it. He brought it down to me thinking I would like it because I like porcelain dolls. As soon as I saw this thing, I got the creeps. Not only because it has three faces, but it just gave me a weird feeling. It would give me a weird feeling too. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt his feelings, so I put it in my cabinet. We were having a warm day, so my dog was laying outside. Now my dog is a golden retriever, and he doesn't have a mean bone in his body, and is very submissive. As soon as he came in the house and darted right to the cabinet, something he never does, and started growling, fur raised, and teeth showing, full out, ready to fight, I took the doll out and put it back in the box on top of the refrigerator so he didn't see it. This seemed to calm my dog down and he went back to his normal tail-chasing, happy-go-lucky self. About a week went by with no issues, and then one night around 3 a.m., the dog started barking and growling. Again, not something he ever does. We ran down thinking someone was breaking into the house, my dog is in his crate at night, and when we got down there, this freaky doll was out of the box on the floor and the box was still 
the lights just flickered. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. <sighs> the box was still on the refrigerator. We couldn't think of any possible way the doll could have gotten out of the box and on the floor without the box falling too. I can't say I've ever seen the doll walk or anything, but lights have turned on when I know I shut them off. My oven door was open when we were not cooking anything. Nothing was ever done when we were in the room. It's always happened when we left the room and came back. We leave the radio on low for the dog when we are away. One day I ran to the store, was gone maybe 30 minutes, and when I opened the door, my dog was locked in his crate and the radio was cranked all the way up. He only gets closed in his crate at night. No one else was home and it was just me and the dog and that freaky doll. I have talked to my husband and pretty much threatened his life if he was doing these things just to try to scare me, but he is just as freaked out and confused as I am. As I was listing this thing, I took like 47 pictures because my camera was messing up pictures and they came out black. And as I was typing this description, music just started playing on my computer. Now it is possible that I accidentally hit the play button on the top of the keyboard, but I don't think I did, but it's possible. The doll is not cracked or broken or anything. As you can see in the pictures, the head may need to be cleaned, just some normal dirt from being stored for a while, just kind of like a listing of the doll and the three face, so on and so forth. Let's hope I don't have any other problems with it until it finds its forever home, hopefully soon. Selling this doll as is, there's no guarantee that this doll will do anything once you get it home. It's freaky and gives me the creeps. You might feel the same way I do or not. Oh, and then down here it says the doll sold once but the buyer backed out. One more thing this doll has done. Ugh. I thought that was a pretty in-depth story for a haunted a doll listed on eBay. Could it just be a story to sell the doll? Of course. Could it just have been a creepy doll that she found? Maybe, but the story felt weird and the way that the typing was, I kind of added in words and sort of edited the post because it seemed very rushed. Like the person writing it was like trying to get done with it quick, like almost panicked if that makes sense. Like you could tell from the beginning the person obviously was very like articulate they knew how to type whatever and then towards the end it's just like there was like this rush almost and that could have been fabricated but this post really gave me the heebie-jeebies and i was like i have to talk about this in a youtube video so that was the first one and i definitely think it's quite the way to start off this video next we have daisy the doll haunted or weird energy and this doll is pretty creepy looking and it's kind of required by everyone on ebay that if you're selling a haunted item you have to say it's for entertainment because on ebay you can't buy anything non-tangible right you can't buy a haunted item you have to say it's for entertainment because um otherwise like people could sue you right for not getting what you sold them so that's kind of how this post starts off and then it talks about the head needing hair replacement so on and so forth dated 1969 and then more stuff about the height this is daisy she's a child who was born with cataracts and her family could not afford the surgery she was in the fields when she was about four or five just enjoying a morning walk with her mother when she wandered away and slipped and fell down a hill most likely the morning dew contributed to the fall the fall caused her to hit her head and cause a neck injury. She lasted only a few weeks after the fall before she passed. All of this came to me and my wife in a dream upon the night the doll stayed in the house. The only other thing we have experienced was my wife felt as if someone was grabbing her leg when she went into the doll room. I think it was Daisy wanting the motherly attention. Also, please do not put the dolls in cabinets. The one she had responded very negatively to the confinement. So. Ooh, that's really creepy but this doll is just like she's pretty raggedy she needs some TLC for sure like there's so much of her hair missing um but pretty creepy story no matter what even if these are all fake to like sell something on eBay for a few bucks pretty creepy stuff and then the next seller that I found is this woman who in every single post that she does and she's selling like a ton of haunted dolls she claims my daughter is nine years old and has the abilities to communicate with spirits the spirits she communicates with on a daily basis seem to find her at the oddest times and places mostly in the form of dolls some of which are the jealous type and require her utmost attention i finally convinced her to downsize her collection because she wants to focus on having more time to spend with her very favorites so basically that's how every single post starts out and then it's kind of the story of the doll this doll in particular is called patience my daughter says that patience died after a drunk driving incident when she was in her mid-20s my daughter says that patience was an alcoholic but now she is totally against it and wishes she could take it back 
She says that Patience was named after a rock star by her father, and always wants my daughter to listen to it, but my daughter doesn't like that music at all, and Patience always wants to hear it. My daughter says that Patience will show her bad attitude by falling over her porcelain dolphin collection. Patience misses her father because she was always a daddy's girl and would like to go home with a female who can relate. <laughs> Um, basically, she'd rather have a female to have her because she always tells the daughter that her daddy could never be replaced, which is like super sad. And this doll is just kind of like a standard creepy porcelain doll. Some of the stories from the seller are creepier than others. I kind of more so just thought that was like really, really sad. Then there's this one called Beth and the photos of Beth or wait, is there only one? I could have sworn I had gone through here and there have been more. Whatever, I guess there's just one, but it's really creepy. Beth is supposedly an Amish girl, and she fell into a creek collecting trash along a fence that people often littered. A car almost struck her, causing her to fall back. Beth always wants to be outside and often communicates with my daughter through dreams, only if the Bible is not laying near her or on a stand. Beth is a very nice and beautiful spirit, but she absolutely loves where she's at now because it's better than what she was taught and how she was treated growing up. Beth is very rebellious and she sins now, I guess, in the afterlife, which is interesting. I didn't really think you could sin in the afterlife, but it's because of this newfound freedom. She is very proper as well by most most other person's standards. My daughter would like to find her an owner who will help her cross because my daughter believes there is something even better for her if she can just find all of her morals again similar to her physical life. I just thought that was really interesting that it was like this Amish girl who had passed away and like it was really sad because it's saying like that she sins in the afterlife and she's really rebellious and you know so on and so forth and really 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 mischievous. I don't know, pretty interesting for sure. I mean, all of these stories are so freaking interesting. This one is named Tia. Tia died in prison in her mid thirties. My daughter believes that Tia was innocent of a murder after she was violated by her husband. Oh, um, Tia's spirit has not crossed over because she feels that empty void inside of her. She has a hard time believing in anything. Her daughter has tried to communicate with her more, but basically that the strong point of communicating is in dreams but Tia comes to her in a blur, bits and pieces, so basically they want to find her a home with someone a bit more experienced with these types of spirits in order to comfort her and assure her that someone is listening. So I think that's really interesting. In every single one of these, you can probably see um, they're looking for kind of a more specific home, someone who can help, you know, um, Beth pass over, someone who can pay more attention to this doll and someone who can help uh, Tia even know that someone's like listening and cares and so on and so forth pretty intriguing and I kind of like that. I think that every seller of these haunted dolls is interesting because oftentimes they'll say something along the lines of this is like a child you're adopting. Like you're bringing somebody into your life with a personality, with a spirit, with an attitude, with you know what I mean? Like you can make them mad. And I just think it's really intriguing when stories are like that and I don't know, I, I thought that was kind of cool that they're looking for more of like a specific home for this doll. So now we're going to move on to something a little bit creepier. This doll is named Pamela. Um, Pamela is really pretty. She's got like this gorgeous red hair. She's just like a super, super beautiful doll, but supposedly <laughs> Pamela is a vampire. She had always been an energetic and vibrant child. She did what she felt and it usually against her family's beliefs. You see, she grew up in the late 1800s in a very prominent, well-off Virginia family. She was promised to someone when she was 18, but on her 18th birthday, she ran. She knew she would never be happy with him. That night was when she turned from human to vampire. That was when she discovered her true self. Um, and then some things. Uh, oh, she's a very dominant and loving spirit. She is truly happy, she felt alive, she can't control herself with all the great feelings that she got, and unfortunately she was stalked and killed by a jealous woman. Her spirit is in this beautiful vessel. Succubus vampire spirit, may all your dreams come true. I don't know. <laughs> Who am I to say anything is far-fetched, you know what I mean? Like, who am I to like call bull on anyone's experience or what anything says happened? That one weirded me out a little. I won't pretend that it didn't, but I still thought it was interesting. The doll is gorgeous. Um, and yeah, I, I'm i kind of getting into some of the darker dolls, if you will. Now, this one is called Daphne, and Daphne creeped me out a lot. Not because of the pictures. I'm getting a little bit of chills just thinking about it. Um, but the story's just 
weird. This is the spirit of Daphne. She was born in uh, and and do and do France in 1469 and died in 1487. She did not reach her 18th birthday. She was married at the age of 15 to a man named Charles. Charles went off to fight in the Anglo-French War. When he came back, Daphne showed me an image of his face riddled with pox scars. She said it was chicken pox and he carried the strain back home with him. She caught it and it cost her her life. I have many spirits in my home and I ask the spirits not to be noisy or create any poltergeist-like activity. Daphne is unhappy because she wants to show off more. I've noticed that twice now she's knocked over dolls that don't have spirits attached that are placed near her. She's asked to be placed up for sale so that she might go to a home where she has a little more freedom to be herself. Anyone that wishes to purchase Daphne, please understand that she knows if she is mistreated or unhappy, she is able to come back to me. Remember to treat her with respect. Daphne is still a human being. She's just in a different form than we are at the moment. Um, basically, she goes on to talk about her spirit children that she has around as well as pets. She is a safe spirit to have her own kids and animals. She's never been malicious, just mischievous. She will communicate via pendulum and basically that she'll include a pendulum um, or pendulum in the sale uh, to basically like talk to her. I just thought it was kind of dark maybe because she seems so unhappy and because like she's kind of acting out so to speak. I think it's so interesting that there are collectors of kind of like haunted dolls like this and granted I have one haunted doll. I think that people oftentimes think I have more because I made videos on like my creepy dolls like my big Annabelle, my hundred year old vintage baby doll but those don't necessarily and I've never claimed have any kind of spirits attached. I think it's interesting that people collect them but it, I'm way too faint apart for anything like that you know what I mean it's almost like it's almost like what I do with animals <laughs> where I want to rescue every single one of them just like giving them a place to be themselves and to exist in these like dolls this isn't really even like that creepy I'm not gonna lie to you the picture just sort of freaked me out um I just sort of wanted to show the pictures I don't know why they freak me out so bad um if it has a talking mechanism it's not working as is I find in rehome spirited dolls this girl is one of three I recently picked up at an estate sale two separate people who are sensitive to the spirit world told me all three dolls are occupied with spirit she is a vintage kissy doll but we think the spirit who occupies her is named Emma um and then Basically, that's it. There's no real like major story there or anything. I just thought the photos were eerie to look at to say the least and she was just kind of one of the creepier dolls. Just something a little bit weird to look at. But now into the scary stuff again. This is such a beautiful doll and honestly like I would probably collect her and keep her in my house if um, the posting didn't start off with need this out of my house ASAP. Almost brand new, found her and two other dolls in the closet of a 100 year old house. I've had her in my possession for about six to seven months and she makes contact almost every doll. I don't understand what that means. Oh, she like, oh, okay, I understand. It, it goes on to say um, she will mysteriously fall off of shelves even though her stand is brand new. She will move her arms and I will find her in different locations every time I turn around. She ends up on a shelf or a chair in my bedroom or in the chair of the room. I have tried to make contact with the spirit possessing this doll through the Ouija board, yet she will say goodbye right away if I ask her any questions about her death. Oh my god, I just got the worst chills. Um, she claimed she died the year 666, which scared the absolute heck out of me. I'm covered in goosebumps. I always try to show you guys this like you can see it, but I really am covered in goosebumps. Um, since contacting her, I've heard a small child's laugh every night and multiple things will go missing or end up in different locations throughout my house. For example, my kitchen knives will be on the floor in the morning when I wake up or my clothes will be pulled from their drawers. Please purchase. Holy. Um, I thought that was a pretty dark one and pretty creepy and I just feel weirded out even talking about it. This doll can stay with her owner. I don't want her anywhere near me. Oh my god, I don't even know what I'd do if I was in that type of situation. I have three more and all three of these are a little on the scarier side. Um, this one actually I will admit is not scary and I have to tell you guys if I hadn't told you in a video once I wasn't going to buy any more haunted dolls I would have bought this doll. She seems so cool. Basically don't be scared by her looks. This doll is home to a little girl named Sylvia. She's a six year old child and she misses her mother. 
This girl is quiet, but don't let her fool you. She loves to talk. I'm not a paranormal expert, but I have vessels in my home that I adore and that I communicate with daily, though not so much anymore, which is why I'm parting with the ones that need most attention. I found this doll at a yard sale dismembered. I collect vintage items or items with spiritual attachments, but never in a million years would I have thought that this sweet child was connected to this doll. When I brought her home, I pieced her together as best I could, but her inner ties are still a little loose. I set her on a shelf next to Jasper, another vessel of mine, and heard a very weak but prominent thanks in my ear. At first I thought nothing of it, but a spirit box session with Jasper later concluded information about Sylvia. They became quick friends. They talk amongst themselves on the spirit box, and it's absolutely incredible to listen to them. Sylvia herself communicates through EVP, spirit board, and spirit box. I've also heard her with my own ears more than once. She giggles quite often, more during the day. Knocking is one of her favorites, as well as turning my heating blanket on and off. She adores stories read to her, and my children love talking with her. My oldest daughter will have tea parties with her, and you can watch her move items on the table. That sounds like a really powerful spirit. With every spirit, you must give them time to adapt in their new environment. Sylvia is very smart and she loves learning. Please, if you choose to buy her, think of her like you're adopting a child. She gets upset just like you and I. And after reading that and like looking at this doll, she kind of looks like one of my baby dolls that I have. The specifically um, my doll that's over 100 years old. They have kind of a similar like face. She looks so sweet, her story is so sweet that I was like, oh, I kinda want her, but you guys, I don't know if I can do it again. I, I didn't really experience anything that was obscene with my other you know, haunted doll, but I did say I wouldn't invite any more paranormal stuff in, so I don't know. I don't know, but I really like her story and she seems really nice. This one was just like a big, big doll. It's like a 30 inch doll and she's from the 70s. Her name is Frances. Frances is a sweet little girl of 11 years old, but the most interesting part of this listing is about her actual doll. And this little girl is made by a company from Mexico called Lily Lady. Lily Lady? I hope that's how you say it. There was a popular video of a woman with a possessed doll that walked on its own and the doll that the woman had was this kind of doll. I found this doll and bought her thinking maybe she was a walker. She has the various body mold alterations to accommodate a walking mechanism and a pull string talker but doesn't actually have either. Her torso is like a blank for several of these types of dolls. In her original pictures, she had horrible cartoon hands. I knew someone replaced her arms with horribly mismatched ones, but what I actually found after getting her is that her arms looked like Frankenstein. Those awful hands were stitched to her old arms, stitch holes burned in and thread run through. Her old arms were also broken at the top. Again, burned in holes and heavy stitching and wire holding them together. I should have taken pictures, but it was horrible. I mean, someone worked very hard to get it done, but couldn't stand to take them off. Good heavens, that was a pain. She had glue and deep scratches on her face under her hair, as though someone had glued a wig on and then raked it off. I removed the glue and smoothed the scratches as best I could. Some of them remain, but they are covered by her hair. Finding this brand of doll at the walker size was hard enough that I knew I wouldn't be able to replace her arms, so I found arms that were as close to the right size as possible. You can tell that her clothing was handmade just for her and with the quality of a seamstress. It's wonderful. Her hair is oddly not rooted all the way into the hairline in the mold, very strange. Frances has said that this was actually her doll. Her mother worked at the factory and this doll was one that didn't turn out as well as it should have, so she brought it home to Frances instead of letting it be destroyed. Many of the things that have happened to this doll happened with other owners after Frances had her. So you'll just have to love her the way that she is. She deserves a long break after the long journey she has had. And then basically just more information about the doll itself. Again, not super freaky or anything like that, but I thought that it was interesting and she's such like a large doll that it was really intriguing to me. I can't imagine having a doll like that or having a mannequin or anything like that in your house, especially if it claims to be haunted. Like. Can you imagine? It's just like that movie, The Boy, turning around and it's like standing behind you or like sitting. Ugh. I would die, you guys. I would die. All right, so this one is Alexis and she's a haunted doll from the Marshall House in Savannah, Georgia, which is obviously a super haunted place um, here in Georgia. I really need to go down there. I wish the lights would stop flickering like that. Oh, that's weirding me out. Why haven't they done that very much before filming this video? I don't know. 
If you take a walk down Broughton Street, you'll come across the elegant and opulent Marshall House, built in 1851 by French cabinet maker Gabriel Lieber. The four-story home served as a hospital for Union Army soldiers towards the end of the Civil War, as well as hosting patients through two epidemics of yellow fever. Many deaths, as you can imagine, fell upon the home. From 1899 to 1957, the home was operated on and off as a hotel. Over 40 years later, in 1999, the property was finally restored to its former glory. Not without some unnatural sensations, however. Late at night, you can see children of the wispy type running down the hallway and ghosts in the foyer. Whew. Guests have also reported that some faucets will turn off and on by themselves. A Lexus was a trigger object used by a group that stayed in several rooms. They wanted to try to make contact with the children that are said to be running around the hotel. The medium and the team made contact with a little girl named Alexis through the doll. She said her mommy worked at the hotel. She told the medium that one night she was pushed out of a window by some mean girls. She was only nine years old in 1942. I was given Alexis by the team that conducted the investigation. Alexis never left the doll. Sorry if I fumbled a little bit on words. Those eBay listings are kind of hard to read on my phone, TBH. But what do you guys think of all of this? Do you even believe in haunted dolls? Like, what do you think of these types of sellings? Do you think they're all fake? Do you think some of them are fake? Do you think that... I don't know, do you think it's all totally real and we can't be the ones to judge? Let me know down below and also let me know if you guys ever find any creepy listings for haunted dolls on eBay because I really enjoy this video series and I'd like to do like maybe one a month or something like that. Um, just cause it's kind of interesting to explore new haunted and creepy dolls on eBay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you all very much and I will see you in the next video. Bye.